Alrighty, so as you can see, Yukon Striker broke. Um, it sank underwater. I'm just kidding. Um, so as you can see, Yukon Striker has some bracing that has been added to three um, footings for the attraction. Um, and don't worry, nothing's wrong. Um, but as you're gonna see in this video, you're gonna see as the train passes over, you're gonna see a little bobbing of the uh, footer. Um, that is somewhat normal. Um, I guess basically what happened here, Surya, um, a really amazing coaster enthusiast in the community and at Canada's Wonderland is gonna explain in detail because he's an engineering student and he knows this stuff in depth. Um, but as you can see, uh, it used to bob a lot more. So you used to be able to see it like bobbing up and down significantly more than you're seeing now with the braces attached. These must have been added over the last five days that Wonderland's been closed. Um, so we're just going to quickly in this video explain why they've been added um, and the other aspects of the ride that you may have noticed as general public or even as enthusiasts. He's going to explain exactly what's going on and how it's normal. Anyways, a huge thank you to Syria for being in this video and explaining what's going on. Um, I definitely learned a lot and hopefully you guys learn a lot from this video as well. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Have a good one, guys. Just in case you guys don't know, I'm Surya, I'm an engineering student. And what's going on here is they added two horizontal structural steel braces to the bottom of the three footings. Now, if you look right over there, that diagonal footing, that's called a pressure point. Or if you really want to get technical, that's, um, that's an area of moment. So in engineering terms, that means that's where all the forces combine and get sent down into the column. So prior to that bracing, Whenever a train would go over, all the vibration would go down the horizontally slanted column into the footing and that energy would be dispersed into the water. Now, I don't know for sure, but what the park has done here is probably tried to dampen that energy more and have it more equally distributed between the three footings so it doesn't cause as much stress. Now, there was nothing wrong with it before. There's nothing wrong with it at all, but it's more precautionary to take so much stress off that one footing so in the future they don't have to go back and redo the grout work so this doesn't mean rmc yukon striker unfortunately not damn <laughs> crushed all your hopes and dreams so other people have noticed the swaying of the beams you've explained that in a previous video do you want to quickly go over that again just so Yeah, so in the columns, that's called oscillating flexural stress. So what's happening is, it's actually not swaying, it's actually going in a circle, but you can't really see. So most people think it's doing this, instead it's actually doing this. And that's because the energy from the train is going down the column in one end, and the resistance from the footing is going up the column in the other end, and they meet in the middle. And in order for that energy to be dispersed, it has to oscillate in a circular pattern. That's awesome information. One more thing that we notice with the roller coasters, especially B&Ms, because they're thick spine, us GP enthusiasts, the track kind of like moves down as the train passes over that. Again, that's also flexural stress, and especially with B&Ms, because like you said, they have a thick spine. Most B&Ms don't normally do that, but because dive coaster trains are so heavy, and all that weight is directed into one centralized area, the track is naturally gonna bend a little bit. And that's perfectly normal, because that's just the track, again, dispersing all that flexural and kinetic energy throughout the spine. If it didn't do that, it would be more dangerous than what it does now. So when they design these things, you know, if you're paying $30 million for this, they definitely account for every possible scenario. These things are over-designed, they're 110% safe, and there's really nothing wrong with them. Exactly. Wonderland has one of the safest uh, track records out there. If not the safest. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Surya. I no actually problem. learned a lot myself today. <laughs> Hopefully everyone watching this learned a lot too. No problem. Um, I know we're not going to learn anything from him. <laughs> <laughs> Or me either, not to give him shame. GPO.